Welcome to the Story Fulfilled podcast, where we deep dive into how each character and story in the Bible come together to fulfill the story of God. I'm Jay. I'm Fletcher. And I'm Rob. And today's story is about Satan. Hey, wait. That didn't sound right. There's only three of us. No, there's four. There's four of us. Four of us today. We have Rob. a very, very special guest back again for season four That's finale. Right. He did our season one finale That's too. That's right. Wow. And he's we back. We bring him in for the big hitter For the big hitter topics. topics. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when it's too much content for us to cover, we bring in the big guns. That's right. When yeah. we need to load up. We he's just, our ringer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great to be here. Yes, and it's great to have you. And always, we do have a question. So, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Monsters, Inc. We've all seen the movie, Monsters, yes. Inc. Yes. Yeah. It, imagine Satan working at Monsters, Inc. in the scare factory, right? <laughs> and so, what, what form would he have to show up in order to scare you? So, what kind of a monster... <laughs> Would he beat? Now I was hoping like Rob hadn't seen Monsters Inc. and you'd have to you know explain the entire plot (laughs) of the movie of what happens. It's been a while. It's been a while. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. So Um, just for for those of you that don't know Monsters Inc., basically there's monsters, and in order for them to live and have electricity, they need to scare children, and the scares fuel electricity. (laughs) So (laughs) what would fuel your screams? (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm going to go first. I, I, the past two days, I've spent considerable amounts of time on the phone with Canada Revenue Agency. Oh, agents. that's scary. And so yeah. that is, the monster is a <laughs> CRA uh, phone agent and or just the, the whole sign-in process for CRA. It's oh, yeah. un, unbelievable. <laughs> the sign-in <laughs> partners and oh boy. Yeah, oh, you're right. Gosh. The lady oh, on the phone. Oh, oh, man. I, had, I actually, today's, today's person... I had to apologize to him for the way that I expressed my frustration <laughs> and ensured him that it had nothing to do with him, but only to do with the whole system. And, and I wasn't rude with him or anything. I just, I was, I, more than once I said, this system is broken. <laughs> and so, so I apologized. So that scares me. Knock on the door in the middle of the night, opens it. There's a briefcase (laughs) briefcase. with a little CRA logo on it. It, You're screaming. All it is is like your two factor authenticate. I'm like, ah! Yeah. I get it. Hate it. All right. Abby, what do you think? What's your scare monster? Come back to me. Now, I was like, okay, what am I scared of? I'm not scared of spiders or mice like Abby is. Um, Um, I'm not scared of spiders. Oh, just mice. I'm not scared of them as long as they're not near me. <laughs> but like one knocks on I'm your door in the middle of the night. Yeah. As long as, <laughs> as, long as they're not as long near they me. They stay in Ottawa. <laughs> yeah, right. they stay in Ottawa. Uh, That's so funny. Oh, this is, I don't know why deadline. this is so tough. Fletcher, uh, what? would be a deadline. A deadline? An approaching oh, yeah. deadline for a paper. Ooh, a paper. yeah. <laughs> They come up quickly, they, too. They yeah. surprise you, even though I know about they them. They exist for three months, but then they just, boom. Suddenly, like a week before, a couple of days before, I go, oh, I have something due. Yeah. yeah, it comes up. Deadline. <laughs> you got a paper due in three hours. Yep, that's, that's it. That's okay. about, You got yeah. me. All right. You got me pegged. <laughs> I am the king of procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> and he would scare me. What about you, Rob? Well... You guys just let me know this a few minutes ago. So I think, for, really, for me, I think ultimately it would be, uh, as Satan is the, you know, the father of all lies, it's deception. Mm. And so you think everything's fine, and then suddenly it's not. Ooh. Or you believe that everything's going along well. And I'm kind of a get-all-your-ducks-in-a-row kind of guy. Uh-huh. And so when you think you've got everything covered, and all of a sudden something comes out of left field. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. like, Colette comes into your bedroom, but then she gets into bed and her feet are all scaly, and you realize it's not Colette. That would, yeah. That would, <laughs> that would be your feet are all scaly. <laughs> Abby, what are you saying about Colette? I'm saying it's not, I told oh, you at the end, it's not Colette. Not Colette. <laughs> For the record, but Abby, Colette, 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 Abby is Colette, not saying you have scaly reptile. feet. Yes, well, yeah, that, it, when you think something, everything's fine, and then all of a sudden, it's yeah. not. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. good. There we go. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to go with, a, this is so on point for today's story, it's just snakes. I really don't like <laughs> snakes. They genuinely scare me. The fact that you can't tell what they're thinking, yeah, yeah. and they'll just come at you, and they can go fast, 
That's so. I'm just gonna. And they go move all yeah. weird and yeah. slithery. Yeah, you true. really cannot tell what like their next move is, and that really scares me. One time, our kids found a snake in the woods, oh. and we nursed it back to health. It was like it, somebody had stepped on it, so there was like a crick in its body. And so Nathan, oh. Nathan, his compassion, and he's like, "Oh, it's a sitting duck. We got to do so." So we had it at home it's in a, a cardboard snake, box. Not a sitting duck. It was just a cardboard box with no top on it because Why? he was still being nursed back to health Why? and then uh it was his birthday and i was going out actually to buy a terrarium because i was like we're gonna keep this snake it's no. just our snake now That's and awesome. so i went to buy a terrarium and then i got a phone call um we can't find the snake oh my gosh <laughs> oh, and oh, no. so the snake was out of the oh. box and so we just we we're like well let's leave the doors open for no. a few hours and see what happens no. and like a week and a half later I'm walking by one of the kids' bedrooms, and the, one of our cats is sitting there laying on the floor oh. in front of this snake, just kind of petting at it. I was like, oh, no, it killed it. But no, it was it was perfectly fine. Oh, my gosh. And so we kept it in the terrarium. And it, and then about two years later, we it was fully healthy. It had eaten enough frogs. Two years you kept it? We, yeah. Wow. wow. Oh Did goodness. you name it? Snakey, I think. Snakey. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure I don't remember actually. When you first started talking about it, it was run over and had a crink, and I thought, I just pictured this, this snake in traction or something. Right, right. <laughs> you wrapped it in tape. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> Get a cast on. Take care of us. Yeah. So you would have hated to be in our house during yeah. those, that week and a half, especially no, when you lost. Yeah, I would have just said, "No, leave it. It can be a sitting duck." <laughs> Sorry. You would have moved out of the yeah. house too. No, no, I just would yeah. have not let them in. <laughs> anyway, I think that's enough question. Yeah, that's that's enough question for today. <laughs> I think. Um, okay. But our story is it's about Satan, and, and we're actually going to look at more than one story today. But as always, we do encourage you to read the stories for yourselves to get the whole picture of what is going on. And so the story takes place throughout the Bible today. Make note of where uh, the references are and, and go and dig in for yourself. And, of course, if you have an answer to our question, it's something that would scare you, what, what type of form would the monsters take to <laughs> fuel your screams? What would that be? We'd love to hear. All right, into our stories. So the first story takes place in Genesis chapter 3, which is in our reading of the Bible, uh, the first appearance of Satan. And this is happening in the Garden of Eden. And we know that God created man and woman in his image, which is perfect. And they were put into the garden. And they were told to work the garden and to keep it, to take care of it. And God told them that they could eat of anything in the garden, but... The fruit from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, they were not to touch. Well, they were not to eat from. Sorry, I said touch, which yeah. is something that Eve made a mistake of adding that in. Mm -hmm. um, we won't go there. But uh, they were told not to eat of that or else they would die. Right. So now we're in the garden and it's perfect. Uh, Adam and Eve, who are not yet named Adam and Eve, the man and the woman are walking around and in the garden, uh, the woman was approached by a serpent, and the serpent ends up talking to her. And, you know, he says to her, a talking serpent is going to mm. talk to her. Mm. Did God really say you can't eat any fruit? It's that phrase, did God, did really, God really say, say this? Mm. And the woman says, well, we can eat any of the fruit except for the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. And if we do touch it or eat it, we will die, is what the woman says. Mm -hmm. And the serpent says, you know, you're, you're not going to die. You but, know, God knows that if you eat this fruit, your eyes are going to be opened and you're going to become like God, knowing good from evil. Which, how were they created? In God's image. Yeah. Right? So he's saying you're going to become like God. Guess what? They're actually already created mm -hmm. in his image. So, mm -hmm. yeah, anyways. <laughs> Stinking Satan. <laughs> right, this, so they're going to get heated throughout this whole episode. <laughs> Darn it, Satan. You did it again. Yeah, no, it's frustrating. Um, knowing good from evil is, is what Satan says they're going to become. Uh, and the woman looks at the fruit and she gets like tempted by it. And mm -hmm. she's like, she starts to desire it. And it actually says that she starts to desire to be wise mm -hmm. is what Satan had promised it would, would happen. And so she brought a piece of the fruit. She took it and she gave it to her husband and herself and they ate it. And of course, like Satan said, though, their eyes were opened and um, they realized that they were naked and they were ashamed by it and they yeah. covered themselves and hid. Yeah. And then later on, God was walking through the garden and looked for them and couldn't find them and said, where are you? 
Okay, I just I, I would challenge that maybe I I don't think he couldn't find them, but he asks the question. Where are you? Which, They're hiding. Which I, I actually perceive that to be an invitation mm-hmm. to them to come clean. To right. Like where where are you? Didn't see them. Yeah. Well, you know you know what I mean though. Yeah. I'm not I'm not saying he God couldn't asks, find them. He in asks with, the question. Where are sure. you? Because yeah. they weren't right there right. and they weren't in his presence. They, they were hiding. Yeah. So. Um, God goes to look for them and he finds them hiding in their shame Mm -hmm. and he finds out what happens eventually. And and Eve says, you know, we ate the fruit and that the serpent deceived us. Mm -hmm. And because of this, God lays a curse on the serpent and the man and the woman, but we're Mm -hmm. covering Satan today. So the serpent's curse and it is in Genesis three. And it says, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts on the field on your belly, you shall go and dust. You shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the story of the curse of the serpent in Genesis. Yeah. And it all, it all began with that word, that phrase, did God really say? Mm -hmm. And um, I think I've said this, I probably said this before here. I've said it a number of times in my life. The very first lie that Satan ever told is one that he still tells today. And it's in that form of that question. Did God really say he he causes us to question God's word? um, And that's where things begin to go off the rails. Yeah. There is a pattern there is that raised, he raises doubt Mm -hmm. and then direct contradiction to God, Mm -hmm. to God's word. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really interesting. If you look at uh, today in, in the culture, Everything that God says, the culture is saying the exact opposite. Mm. It's amazing that that, mm. that is still playing itself out in yeah. our culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I love that, that you know you've got to the part here where we you see the pronouncement by the by God that, that He's going to bring forth a Redeemer, a Savior. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And be, this is the first prophecy of the coming of, of yeah. our Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Right at the very beginning of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to skip ahead to the first century A.D. So Jesus is born, and he's now a man. And a prophet named John, who, John the Baptist, we've Crazy talked John. about him. Crazy John, <laughs> <laughs> according to the Chosen. He's a famous preacher, and he's baptizing. He warns of one coming greater than him. And one day Jesus comes to the Jordan River where John's baptizing and asks to be baptized. And John's just kind of bewildered and right. says, no, 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 you should be baptizing me. Mm-hmm. And Jesus says, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and John ends up baptizing Jesus. So when Jesus is baptized, the heavens were opened and the spirit descended into hell into him. And there came a voice from heaven that said, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. So that's kind of the background of what we're going into with the next story. Exactly. So right after this, Jesus has been descended upon by the spirit and, and the heavens opened up and said, this is my son who I'm well pleased. And then immediately after this, Jesus just goes out into the desert and starts fasting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says he's led by the spirit into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days. Yeah. And after these 40 days, he's obviously pretty hungry. Um, But the devil uh, kind of appears to Jesus and says, you know, you're the son of God. You're hungry. Turn these rocks into bread. Um, And Jesus answers with a quote from Deuteronomy. And he says, man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And in that, he said, you know, defeated the temptation of trying to use his power. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, another time Jesus comes, sorry, the devil comes and he takes Jesus to the top of the temple. It says he took him to the top of the pinnacle of the temple. Uh, we kind of talked about Herod the Great a couple weeks ago, and he just rebuilt it, made it even bigger and better. Uh, it is probably like 150 feet in the air. And they're standing at the top and he said, look, if you jump down, hasn't God promised that his angels will protect you and you won't even hurt your heel? And then Jesus responds again from another quote from the law in Deuteronomy, do not put the Lord to the test. Right. And then the third one, he comes, the devil, and he takes Jesus to a high mountain and he shows him all the kingdoms of the world. And he says, I will give you all of this if only you bow down and worship me. Right. And then Jesus, once again on the third time, quotes the law. He quotes Deuteronomy saying, you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. And then after that third temptation, that third try at getting Jesus uh, to sin, the devil then left him and then Jesus was just... Uh, worshipped by some angels. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> well, and ministered to. Ministered to yeah. by angels, yeah. Which I, yeah, and this story and 
the story of the fall are actually they're very closely tied mm -hmm. um first john uh chapter 2 verse verse 16 says for everything in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes uh, not from the father but from the world and and we actually see those three prides those three lusts that are placed before jesus in this temptation and also before eve in in her temptation as well and, and i don't have time to go into the the direct parallels but if you look at both of those uh along with that verse in in first john you you can see very closely how satan's playbook doesn't change from genesis yeah. 3 to the temptation of jesus where he's he's putting the same things in front of and, and doesn't change for us either same temptations are placed in front of us to the appetites of the flesh uh, the pride of life and um and the lust of the eyes it's mm -hmm. the way yeah. it goes mm -hmm. and then there's another connection uh, i think it's in it's in first corinthians 15 and paul is talking about how Jesus is the new Adam mm. and you know in Adam we all die but in Christ we all have life and it, and it really parallels the story it's like Adam failed his temptation right. mission but Jesus three times over defeats the temptation yeah. is able to conquer it yeah. and and say no yeah. and use the word of God and use uh, faith that God is gonna see him through right which is the beginning of the reverse of the curse mm -hmm. which we'll we'll talk a little, a little bit, bit about, about more yeah. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> yeah. Yeah, All interesting. Right. Satan comes at uh, obviously the Lord's weakened physically, mm -hmm. right? And so that, that's his mo as well, right? When we're at our low point, yeah. you know, he'll bring that temptation to us, right? And so, and the Lord responds with the Word of God. That's that's our should be our response as well. Yep. 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 Uh, so we have a third story, and this one takes place a few years after the last one. And Jesus had been in ministry for about three years now, and he is in Jerusalem to. Uh, celebrate and observe the Passover with his friends and the Pharisees and the Sadducees are looking for a way to have Jesus killed and Satan's been working on killing Jesus himself and we talked uh, a couple weeks back about how he even entered into Judas to get the job done um, and so Jesus is actually betrayed by Judas and is then brought to trial before the high priest and after finding him guilty of blasphemy for claiming to be the son of God. He's brought to Pilate and Pilate ends up, Pilate is a great interaction, um, which I think we'll probably look at in some season so. of, of this podcast. Absolutely. And he ends up, he doesn't really know what to do. And he's, so he turns to the crowd and he's like, what do you want me to do with Jesus? And they shout, crucify him, crucify him. And they demand that he be crucified. So yeah, he, he has been condemned by both the Jewish government and the Roman government. And so the soldiers take him off, they strip him, and they put a crown of thorns on his head, and they flog him and, and scourge him with whips filled with metal and glass. And he's torn to shreds, and they mock him, calling mm -hmm. him the king of the Jews, which yeah. later on they actually put a sign on the top of his cross that says the king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Um and then they crucify him. They make him walk up to a place called Golgotha, uh, and they crucify him there with two other criminals. Um, again, I'm I'm glossing over the biggest story and most important <laughs> story in in the Bible. So don't, I'm not covering everything. I'm sure we'll cover it in another episode right. in more detail. We're skimming over the important details here. Um, and then he's crucified, and as he died in his last breath, you know, he says, "It is finished," mm -hmm. and it says that he gave up his soul. It wasn't taken from him, but he gave right. it up willingly. And so in his death, he took the shame and the punishment of sin on himself. And then um, we see that three days later, he rose again from the dead, conquering death itself right. um, by rising from the grave. And there's a couple different sections that talk about, you know, what's going on with that. And in Peter, uh, sorry, in Acts, Peter talks about how uh, it was impossible for death uh, to keep its hands on Jesus. Yeah. Like he was coming out of the grave. He was victorious over it. I love that phrase. Um, I'm going to read Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to 15. And it says, You were dead because of your sins, and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Mm. 
In this way, he dismantled the spiritual rulers and authorities, and he shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Yeah. And those rulers and authorities, that is the demons and, and Satan himself, has right. been dismantled and disarmed and shamed publicly by Jesus' victory on the cross. Yeah. Woo! We can clap about yeah. that. That's but. right. <laughs> That's right. Amen. And, and in that we're looking forward to the final victory because mm-hmm. we, as we know, as amazing as that story is and as uh, victorious as that shows Jesus to be, we still have this nagging presence of this horrible thing called sin. Mm-hmm. And so um, w- we see that there's still another victory to, to come. Yeah. So that's why we have Rob here to talk about <laughs> talk about Jesus' ultimate victory over Satan. Yeah. In the end. Well, I mean it's it's interesting because the Lord's first coming, his first advent, which we're celebrating this time of year, we're mm-hmm. celebrating the Lord's coming, his first advent. What he accomplished in his first coming, he's not finished. Right. The job's mm-hmm. not done yet. And he's going to complete that mission at his second coming. So he has provided salvation. He's he's in the role of the kins and redeemer, and he has provided freedom from this, from slavery of sin. And we are now free, set free by the Son. Mm-hmm. And now uh, at his return, he will complete that and mm-hmm. redeem the earth and uh, and deal with Satan. And so we see Satan uh, at the end in Revelation chapter twenty is bound at the beginning of the millennial reign of Christ at his return. And he's bound for a thousand years. And then we see at the uh, verse uh, one to three, that's one to three, that's accounted for. In verse seven to 10, he is released for a mm. short season. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it, what happens is he, is, he let, he's go forth, and he deceives the nations. And so what is this all about what's happening there? And very quickly, what, what, what's taking place there at the end of, of the Bible, at the very end, we see... Um, that we, we have that, that Satan is now being in, in, used in, in a way by the Lord because during, we, we think of the millennial reign of Christ as this, as this wonderful time because mm-hmm. the Lord's going to return. He's going to make uh, conditions are going to be restored, almost like Eden-like conditions right. that we're going to live in. There's no yeah. more wars. There's no right. more, right? And, and, and so and every, there's enough food and, there's, and everything is just, all of our needs are met. Mm-hmm. And we're in the presence of God, right? We're in the yes, presence of Jesus Yes, the Lord is himself, here. He's right, ruling and right. reigning. And so it's, it's this, it's, we get this picture of it's this beautiful time and, uh, for a thousand years. We have to ask you, well, why is it only a thousand years and what's the purpose of it? And we see that the, the answer for us comes in, in chapter 20. But when we think of the, the millennial reign of Christ, it is this time, actually the Lord tells us uh, in the scriptures that we think of it this way, but it actually isn't. Mm. Because what's actually happening is there's deception going on. Right. Man's heart is evil. And so that has never changed. And so those who are, go through the, are, are born and live through the millennial reign of Christ, their hearts are actually turned against the Lord. And the Lord's very aware of this. Um, in fact, um, when we look at back in Scripture, his, 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 uh, his disciples ask, well, why do you always speak in parables? Mm. And the Lord answers, said, so that by hearing they won't hear, by understanding they won't understand. And so he's actually quoting Isaiah. Right. But what he's actually saying is, when Jesus, when he spoke, he spoke in parables because he knew that at any one time when he was gathered, when he was ministering, when he would gather, people would gather, there would be those who would, no matter what miracle he performed, no matter what he said, mm-hmm. they would not believe him, would not turn to him. Right. And so as an act of mercy, our Lord spoke in parables. Because at the end of all of his parables, he always said, for those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Because right. he knew there would be those who didn't have ears to hear, and they would not hear no matter what he did. Mm-hmm. And so as an act of mercy, at the end of, uh, at the end of time when, when judgment came, when their, they'd be, their eternity, this is an act of mercy. So Because we're going to be held accountable for what we did with what we knew. Right. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the Lord is speaking... By speaking in parables, it's an act of mercy for those mm-hmm. who would never turn to him, mm-hmm. even though they heard him speak and so and saw the miracles. So um, in that regard, we come back then to the, the millennial reign, and the Lord knows that those who are living during the millennial reign are actually not for him. Mm. And, and, and so Satan is released at the end, and he, is, he goes out and deceives the nations. And it's, it, the sad part of the end of the Bible is what happens is that deception 
we see that when the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison. They will go out and deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth to gather them for battle. In number, they are like sands on the seashore. So most of the people that are alive during the yeah. millennial reign have turned against the Lord mm -hmm. by, the, by the deception of, of Satan. And they come up and they march across the breadth of the earth and surround the camp of God's people, the city he loves. And then the fire comes down from heaven, devours them. And that's yeah. the end. Yeah. That's the end of the millennial reign. Then we move into the great white throne judgment and a new heaven and new earth. The millennial reign, its purpose, I believe, is, is, is stated in the obvious here, is that the Lord's making a statement that we understand that Scripture is a progressive revelation of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And all through, through the Bible, we see this progressive revela revelation of his nature, mm -hmm. of his attributes, mm -hmm. and his plan for redemption. And we go through this, the Bible, we see a greater revelation of God. And so, so the time that we're in now, the church is, we've, no one's had more great, greater revelation than we have right now. Right. The Lord has come, we have the, the scriptures are complete. And yet during the, during the millennial reign, God is here. The Lord is ruling and reigning. It's the, it's the ultimate revelation of God. Mm. And really what God is saying is there's no greater revelation he can make that would cause people to turn to him. And so at the end of the, of the millennial, everyone, most of the people turn, to, right. turn against Away, him. Yeah. Right. And then comes judgment. And the Lord is, you know, these people are condemned to eternity in mm -hmm. hell. Mm -hmm. And it's, God is saying, he's, he's making a statement about justifying what he's doing. There's nothing else he could do for yeah. these people with the ultimate revelation. And yeah. that's what's happening in the millennial reign. And then at the end of that, of course, Satan is cast into the lake of fire for eternity. Right. And so he's dealt with finally. So if you wonder, well, why was he bound for a thousand years? This is why the Lord is actually using his hate and his evil mm -hmm. to cause the, the turning of and see the revealing the true hearts of people mm -hmm. at the end. Yep. And it's really sad, ultimately. And, but then we move into the new heaven and new earth and those who are his and loving the Lord, yep. we move into eternity with him. Yep. Yeah. Something that I really, really like that you said a little bit earlier is that uh, you compared the presence of God in the millennial reign to the Garden of Eden. It's like they were with God yeah. and... In the, in the millennial, they are with yeah. God. They have God's presence. And you always hear people say, well, why doesn't God show himself to us? Mm -hmm, yeah. And the garden showed this and the millennial will show this is even if God's presence is right there staring you at the face, people will still turn away. Our yeah. hearts will turn away from God. Yeah. Um, yeah, so no right. amount of revelation, no amount of proof, and exactly with the parables is no amount of miracles or miracles and parables from Jesus is going to convince somebody whose yeah. heart has been closed yeah. off, right? Hundred percent. And even in the Book of Revelation, the the earlier chapters are talking about God putting His glory on display, and still the people refuse to turn yeah. their their hearts to Him. And then you you step back, you see Romans chapter one talks about the the um, glory of God being put on display through all of creation, and still their hearts are hardened and turned away from them. And then we even look back, and we have difficulty. We have difficulty with hell and the kind of concept of that and how can a loving God send people to hell and blah, blah, blah. Um, that, that's an issue that people have. And we take a step back. You have um, the conquest of Jericho and we see that people, like they were told to utterly destroy people and we have questions and concerns about mm -hmm. that. Noah's Ark, we see and, and we're like, well, how All can, death, how can? Yeah. But each and every one of those instances, there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity there. The door, the doors of the ark were open until they weren't, and anyone Absolutely. could have been yeah. like, "Hey Noah, what are you doing?" Or you've seen the movie Noah, crazy Noah, what are you doing? Uh, and it, oh, I need to be on that boat, mm -hmm. right? And so the doors were open until they weren't. Uh, Jericho, we see that Rahab actually recognized what was going on and said, "I want to be, I want to follow God. I need to be on that side." Anyone else could have done the same they knew she says that they knew as a nation or as a city like that the power god, of god the power yeah. of god and it was on display and they were dead yeah. in the waters no they had no chance but yet they still hardened their hearts and mm -hmm. refused and so and and romans one as i mentioned it talks about the wrath of god and the wrath of god is actually a turning us over to our own desires and, mm -hmm. and when we allow or when we refuse to receive what he has for us then our desires are revealed and that's what we receive and, and, and we don't want that. And that's why we need, we need to be so actively engaged in exposing the lies of Satan and introducing people to Jesus mm -hmm. so that they don't continue down that exactly. path. And, you know, and, and what you, you're doing here in this ministry, this podcast, mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about the lengths that God has gone to 
throughout history to reveal his goodness and his yeah. longing and his love and his, he's ready to receive us and, and the lakes he's gone to providing his son. I mean, God is awesome. Yeah. And, and, and for those who want, he won't force people to be with him. Yeah. You know, and, mm-hmm. and, and so this is really ultimately a choice if people are turning away, right? Mm-hmm. And they su- we suppress the truth in our, in our unrighteousness. Yeah. You know, we, and so um, the ending of the story is, is as it was all through. You know, and, and God's ultimate revelation of himself. Yeah. 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 That exactly like Rob said, our name is the Story Fulfilled Podcast. The story <laughs> from the beginning has been God's revelation of his son, yeah. uh, of himself, of himself yeah. uh, over and over and over again throughout history. And then the ultimate revelation of his son, Jesus Christ, and how he his role was to conquer sin mm-hmm. and death so that we can have a relationship with God again. Yeah. And now yeah. we're in this church age. We have that revelation of Jesus, and that is what um, we need to turn towards. It's not, you know, hidden from us. The The, the revelation of Jesus has been revealed. Like the big secret right. of, of his church and of his son has been revealed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that is... And that's a, Sorry to interrupt, but that... <clears throat> go for it. The age that we're in right now... We've had the greatest revelation. This is the, the most evil because of the amount of revelation we've had. You move into the millennium, it's the ultimate revelation of God, and it's the most evil then. Mm-hmm. So you, the, the measurement of evil is based on the amount of revelation that we have. And so, you know, you compare where we are and go into the millennium, and right. there's the Lord. He's there, and he's ruling and reigning, and yeah. still, you know. So to turn away from him then, there is nowhere else to go. Mm-hmm. God That's cannot right. provide, you know. And what, what is God going to do? Force people to be with him? No, right. like, exactly. Yeah. He's not going to, nobody wants to be forced to be with somebody they don't want to be with. And, right. and if we have God in open face relationship, look, uh, here I am. And people still turn away. You, yeah. What are you going to yeah. do? Right. Yeah. So I, we <sighs> wanted to, <laughs> <laughs> big breath, but we wanted to finish with, yeah, the ultimate victory is, yeah. um, ignore the topic today is Satan, but the ultimate victory is, in Jesus and his tossing into the lake of fire yeah. and then the new heaven and the new earth yeah. and the new creation with we, God. Maybe we should have saved this episode for our absolute finale, all <laughs> time finale, finale of the but... story fulfilled podcast. We promise we'll be back next season. Yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us this season. It's been great to have you. The long running season finale. It's uh, been a long one, but yeah. thank you so much, Rob, for coming on. Oh, uh, yeah. You packed a, a lot into that. Absolutely. No, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. All right. See you next season. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.